contemplated writing an article about racism, I felt a conflict that was almost inconquerable. The experience of racism, my experience with racism, was so profoundly personal that I could not gain enough intellectual or emotional distance for an objective discussion. I live in a country that is chronically infected with the virus of racism, and it seems that every time we believe that this virus is under control, and unvaccinated hearts and minds, it gains a new foothold and threatens, once again, to wipe us all out. Like a virus, racism makes me angry and tired. I am exhausted from fighting the same fight as my ancestors before me. We have all had to fight against this abominable disease, and I, for one, and feeling the effects of generational fatigue. I am exhausted from the same phenomenon and the same discussions. My five plus decades of life have been marked by the consistency of police brutality. As a six-year-old, I saw it when fire hoses and police dogs were turned on civil rights workers. I heard Marvin Gaye plaintively ask, don't punish me with brutality in the 70s. In the 80s, as a young adult, I saw the war against drugs and black people played out with battering rams as public enemy urged us to fight the power and NWA encouraged us to do something expletive to the police. In the 90s, I watched a videotape that allowed the world to see Rodney King being beaten to a pulp as he controlled the action from the ground. And in this new century, I see the violence of policing almost daily in my social media news feeds with African American victims who are young, old, male, and female. I am exhausted by conversations constantly comparing how white perpetrators of mass murder are apprehended alive by police, while unarmed black drivers with broken taillights who seemingly scare the bejesus out of these same police are killed while reaching for their licenses. I am exhausted from the knowledge that threatening to call the police on an African American can realistically be perceived as a death threat. However, I am mostly infuriated that my taxes employ people who terrorize rather than protect and serve my community. There is the fatigue of knowing that our lives don't matter. When my son was born in 2000, I knew I would have to exert extra time and effort to ensure his survival in this racism-infected environment. And though there were glimpses of hope, such as the 2008 election of President Barack Obama. This hope may have lulled us into a false sense of security, one that led us to believe that the disease had been put down when it in fact had only been momentarily suppressed. By 2013, we were sure we were no longer post-racial as we saw a child gunned down in front of his Florida home and the killer set free. How could this be in the 21st century? In the years that followed, we became aware that it was officially hunting season and young black men were the prey. Yet the national discourse revolves around whether football players have the right to kneel in protest. When off the field, they are not assured of their right to live. There is the fatigue that comes from dusting off your great-grandmother's speech about dealing with the police to serve it fresh to your pre-adolescent child. The fatigue that comes from your child saying that he is like a spider and that people can just kill him without consequence. No, that is not fatigue. That is pure heartbreak. Fatigue comes from telling your child again and again that the big it is not fair and that he is valuable and worthy of protection. There is the collective weariness that results from wanting to tell new stories, but having to retell the old ones, 
like slave spirituals of faraway promises of freedom and safety.